this short video we're going to be talking about the types of cost and how those costs behave. So the first type of cost we'll be looking at is direct cost. So these costs, just like their name informs us, has a direct relationship to a cost object. And it can be traced directly back to the product or job. This is called cost tracing. The second type of cost is an indirect cost. Now unlike direct cost, these costs cannot be traced directly back to a product. So we call this cost allocation. So indirect costs have to be allocated to a product because they can't be traced directly back to a product. Now let's look at cost behavior. The first behavior we'll look at is variable. So variable cost will change in total in proportion to changes in the related level of activity or volume. So the key word here in this de definition is total. So note variable cost change in total. Unlike fixed cost, which remain unchanged in total, regardless of changes in the related level of activity or volume. So again, the key word in both of these definitions is total. Well, if we know how they behave in total, how would they behave on a per unit basis? So let's look at a couple of graphs so we can get a, a picture of this representation. So the graph on the left represents our total variable cost. So we're given our sales in units on our x-axis and our y-axis is our variable cost. So you can easily see as our sales increase, so does our total variable cost. Unlike our diagram on the, on the uh, right, our total fixed cost, Again, our sales and units is on the x-axis and our fixed costs now are on the y-axis. You can see as our sales increase from 0 to 60,000 units, our fixed costs remain the same at $5,000. So again, this is just verifying the definitions before. Variable costs, as you can see in total, increase as the activity level increases. Total cost, total fixed cost, remain unchanged as our sales volume changes. So how do, they, how do they change on a unit basis? Well, let's first look at variable cost per unit. So if we take, take each level here, we'll go 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000. So at 1,000 units, our variable cost is $50,000. Divided by the 1,000 units gives us a $50 per unit variable cost. Well, look at the 2,000 level on the graph. See if you can figure out what the total variable costs are at 2,000 units. Now what would the per unit be? It's $50 per unit. Notice the pattern here. What about 3,000 units? What is the variable cost per unit at 3,000 units? It's again $50 per unit. Notice that total variable costs change with activity level, but per unit variable costs stay the same. Well, let's look at fixed cost. And we'll take a few of their activity levels as well 20,000 units and 40,000 units. So fixed cost at 20,000 units is $5,000. So on a per unit basis, that's 25 cent per unit. What do you think fixed costs per unit are going to do as the activity level increases? If you said decrease, you're exactly right. The fixed cost per unit at 40,000 sales units is 12.5 cent per unit. So now this brings us to what we call a relevant range. It's important to note that, for example, here we have a graph of fixed cost. Notice that between 0 and 120,000 miles, our fixed costs stay the same. 
Now we know that total cost, total fixed costs do not change, but it's increasing. If you note between 120,000 and 140,000 or 240,000 miles, our fixed costs are $80,000. Between 240,000 miles and 360,000 miles, our fixed costs are $120,000. So the definition we need to know here is in regards to a relevant range. So within a relevant range, we can be sure that our fixed costs do not change in total.